Hello and welcome to some more Star Citizen. Today I wanted to talk about two major things. What ships are currently in production and are actively being made by Cloud Imperium now. And we have some at least partial resolution to players waiting in game for insurance claim timers to be resolved and getting their ships back. Cloud Imperium previously raised the waiting times on ships and vehicles when you claim them after they've been lost or destroyed, as well as their expedite times and costs. So lots of players were waiting a lot longer to get their ships back. Some people only had a couple of ships and um, or one ship. And if you're waiting a long time for that, well, that really, really stops you from actually playing and enjoying the game. Obviously, this is a much more of an issue for players that don't have many ships. And with the raises that Cloud Imperium made in 3.19 to these ship timers, well, you're waiting a few minutes extra to over an hour extra to get your ships back. Now, in the future, I think that might be a good idea. Even longer timers for insurance claims and that sort of stuff based on different types of insurance may be a good shout. But in the short term, when we have a alpha game and lots of bugs and lots of things can go wrong and your ships can sort of like uh, effectively disappear or blow up because of bugs or whatever, well, that, let's make it a bit more friendly um, so that players can uh, get their ships back more easily. And Cloud Imperium have, in the latest 3.19.1 PTU patch, lowered ship insurance timers and expedite costs across the whole ship lineup. So CIG recently said, in regards to the changes in ship timers. The team is now analyzing the ships according to a variety of different criteria, which in turn dictate how long it will generally take the systemic economy to produce a new vehicle when lost, and thus how much time and expense the insurance system should levy. Those base values are the then scaled down, and some ship parameters are given a bit of extra weight, such as larger vehicles, which will see a larger time reduction as well now, with the most recent changes. And given the current state of the game, and so that we can get gameplay experience that we sort of want, we're going to be changing um, some bits here. Um, further to this, they said... It won't be a full reverting of the increase they made in 3.19 though, but it will be more like how a compressor works and ratio down the top times more than the lower ones. I think the 890 jump will drop from around 55 minutes to expediting to around 25 minutes. I personally think that's still quite a long time for an expedited time that you've paid for. So yeah, they have lowered insurance and ship claim timers based on player feedback for Alpha 3.19.1, which is currently on the PTU. So this isn't on the live servers yet. They're going to continue monitoring it, but they haven't lowered them to what they were before 3.19. It is certainly much better than it was, though. However, as I've said previously, I personally think most timers should be a lot lower than in 3.19. 18 even, or uh, players should have the option to entirely circumvent waiting for their ship claim timers. So when you expedite, you can potentially get your ship back almost immediately by paying Alpha UEC. In the future, when it makes more sense to actually have waiting and loss be a more important part of the game, awesome. Yeah, I'm all up for that. Maybe even having to wait weeks potentially for capital ships. But really in the short term, at least in my opinion, it does not add anything to the game. It only gets in the way of gameplay and testing. We know the players don't want to lose ships. It's not going to be providing much in the way of useful um, data and balance yet either because we don't have a dynamic economy. We don't have most of the things that would enable the actual data to be useful. Short and medium term, allow players to play the game as much as possible so that we can find bugs and get the more big ticket items sorted and balanced like the general combat model flight model um all the sort of gameplay experiences closer to beta maybe in beta then yeah bam do all this sort of stuff when we have death of the spaceman all of that jazz then test out waiting and timers and sort of um how that affects players playing the game anyway that's just my thoughts on that the latest 3.19.1 PT patch did make some more changes beyond that. Um, so they made further Lawville performance improvements. They've adjusted mineable rock instability values to be more predictable so players can better react um, with the, that sort of mining gameplay. Uh, they fixed an issue that was causing AI to get stuck standing or crouching on um, chairs and other usables. Maybe we're out of the era of NPCs standing on chairs, but we're probably not. Uh, they fixed an issue causing inventory to indefinitely load. They fixed Operations Depot Lyria 1, uh, missing its Protect Site mission marker for quantum travel. And they fixed a client and three server crashes. So, the other big topic here. 
what ships are currently in active production. So we have some information on the roadmap, but also a recent Star Citizen Live that focused on ship questions. And basically Cloud Imperium said there, the following ships are in production. Uh, the Hull Sea, that massive cargo hauler. And we do know that's supposed to be turning up for 3.20. And we've got the Spirit Series, the small multi-crew alternatives to the Freelancer and Cutlass. I'm expecting that for 3.20 as well, to be honest. Uh, SRV, that tractor beam tow ship. Again, actually, quite a lot of this stuff potentially could turn up this year or in 3.20, um, but SRV very much being worked on. The Storm, the new concept light tank there that's just been revealed. The Santok Yai, Xi'an medium fighter, and we've seen loads and loads of work on that over the last few months. There are some redacted ships and vehicles that they seem to be working on. I think a single ship or vehicle and then a series uh, of ships and vehicles um, that they're currently working on. There are some variants of existing ships and uh, the Retaliator Gold Standard is also seeing some work at the moment, but we don't have hard dates for much of that. Some ships and vehicles that may be going into production very soon are the Apollo, that hugely popular medical ship, as well as the X1 floating sort of luxury origin bike, and the G12, that rover. This sort of like a hybrid between the Lynx and a Tumbrel Cyclone. Excitingly for some, but quite vague, they are investigating pre-production on the Polaris, so that mighty Corvette that's got very, very sort of high combat potential, big torpedoes, a um, bit of a multi-role mission runner as well. Um, so they're aware of how popular that ship is, and that may go into production again uh, when resources are available. Um, I do think they want to be pushing that potentially. Uh, Reclaimer also needs a rework, they said, but we don't have a time frame on that. There was some other tangible development information in that Star Citizen Live. They say that there are never too many ships, as long as they sort of like don't overlap with each other in style and role too much. They'll sort of um, keep on making ships that fill holes they like to have a lot of diversity in ships and choices for players as well so yeah some ships are going to have similar roles um, but they'll be from like different manufacturers or they will have a different style uh, in game ship manufacturers have been influenced by real world car and plane companies it seems concept ships can move between manufacturers that they don't fit in as well so when they're sort of building up concept ships and vehicles they go actually we've decided that it fits in this different manufacturer and now so they might sort of change them during concept there might be some new variants of the fury in the future they threw some ideas around like a racing one ramming one salvage one they have been improving the ship pipeline with a larger team they may be able to release a capital ship each year in addition to all of the other ships that they're also working on they talked about being able to set up the hull sea with lots of silly loadouts when they were testing and um, so they were able to just, like stick weapons to it and torpedoes and lots of different things maybe we might see some interesting modularity or customization weapons choices in the future for cargo ships and cargo pods maybe modularity as a feature for ships is now technically ready for development or at least nothing is holding it back now but it's not actively being worked on i believe they're waiting for the ship resource management system stuff to come in physicalized damage is being worked on and it appears that the system includes ships vehicles props structures and environments to some degree ship scale tractor beams are also being worked on and They've had a bit of a size refactor, but really it's just naming convention stuff. Basically, now size ones will be able to move large objects and small containers. Size twos are there to move large cargo containers. And size threes, that's potentially going to be able to move massive cargo containers or sort of ship sized things. Please be aware that's the sort of my understanding of the information they said. And it's a active development. Stuff changes all the time. So things do change, but that's currently Cloud Imperium's plans for those. I am really interested to know what you think about those ship updates. Were you someone that was annoyed by the ship timer increase? And do you think that they've gone a long way in trying to solve that in 3.19.1 and actually you want them to go further with that? Or what's your opinion on that? Do you want them to actually go, no, I want loss in game now. I want them to try and push that as quickly as possible. And that's really, really important. So they should actually be expanding out the ship um, timers and it's important data and stuff that they can get from that. Or do you want it to go, no, I, w I want no timers or very little in the way of timers or ways of circumventing it completely so I can actually just play the game when I want to without those extended waiting times. Maybe it's just that Star Citizen isn't ready for those mechanics yet. Are you excited for those ships that are currently in production and you hope to see them this year? What ship are you hoping that Cloud Imperium makes 
ASAP. We don't have any real news on the Banu Merchantman at the moment. I'm going to prod CIG a bit about that and see what's happening. Hopefully we'll see some updates at CitizenCon on that. Are you playing in 3.19.1? What do you think of that latest PTU patch? Whatever your thoughts, I'd love to hear from you in the comments below. Give a man a fish and he'll eat for a day, but give him a NordVPN subscription using nordvpn.com slash boardgamer or the links below and he'll browse the internet more safely and with greater accessibility for a lifetime or at least until his subscription ends. He can then shop for his own fish from places like Tesco's, Walmart or Asda or something. It also makes a fantastic gift. Next time you go to a dinner party or a wedding, bring them a NordVPN subscription. Bam! You'll be the talk of the town and it's certainly better than bringing a fish. Please remember to like and subscribe, and if you'd like to go further to support the channel, then use that join button under my videos or the Patreon links below. That would be amazing. It goes a long way to helping Zin and I be able to create daily videos, and you'll get some exclusive perks, including some videos, posts, and polls to help guide the channel. Every month we have a ship giveaway. For May, it's for an Origin 400i, the luxury exploration touring ship capable of taking three crew to distant stars. It also comes with lifetime insurance and a Star Citizen game package. To be in for a chance of winning that, just comment on any of my videos made during the month. More details down below. Thanks very much for watching. I hope to see you in the verse.